guests. Let me see if I can pin a comment. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi, John McGarvey. How you doing? Hi, everyone. Kind of collecting you all in. Thought I would give myself a little head start. Let me put my headset on. We'll get that go. And there we go. Hi. Hey. How are you all doing? Hey. Welcome to Get Sauced. It's Rob Ruggiero here in my kitchen. This is week three. I hope some of you are coming back. I have a really fun guest tonight I can't wait to bring on. Um, as you know, Thursdays at five, I invite you into my kitchen here in West Hartford um, because for Italians, the kitchen is the place to gather. We cook here, we eat here, we talk here, we hug, laugh, cry. It's a really a special place for an Italian and for many other people, I think for all people really. Kitchen is a great, great place. Tonight, I have a very special guest, but before that, um, I thought I would tell you what I have going on in my kitchen because, you know, I always have something going on. Hi. But first, I'm going to pour myself a glass of wine. Tonight, I have a Josh Chardonnay. Who likes Chardonnay out there? I usually, usually like a Sauvignon Blanc, but I'm pouring... A nice glass of Chardonnay. Yes. Hey, cheers to you all and welcome. And then I had today, I decided to make a little charcuterie because who doesn't like a little charcuterie? So as you can see, I have this little charcuterie going. So I have a little soprasetta a little uh, regatta salata and olives. And these are a little plug, but these are my favorite crackers. I don't know if you guys have tried these uh, Rainbow Crisp. You gotta take out a mortgage to get them, but they're delicious. And on the stove today, I have, which I may show you later, I have some turkey meatballs. So I made some meatballs, but with turkey, cause they're a little healthier. So. Again, it's Rob, live at five in my kitchen, and I'm about to bring on a very special guest if I can, you know, figure all this out. Um, I didn't want to forget anything, so I'm going to, oh, you need a glass? Yes, have a glass. I wish I could share with you all. So, you know, I'm going to bring her on because you're still gathering, and then I'll tell you how great she is. Here comes my guest. Connie Showman, I'm gonna bring her on. She's at her farm, I think, somewhere fun. Let's see. Here she comes. Okay. Hey. hey. Hi, <laughs> Everybody, this is Connie Showman. What are you I drinking? Got my special wine, Zevia. No <laughs> calories. Yes. Well, cheers. cheers to you. Thank you for coming on. Thank um, you for having me. It's the uh, light too. I feel like the light's too much on my face. No, okay. you got a little a little special highlight, but there's somebody walking around you. Um, yeah. So this, I didn't want to forget anything. I'm going to list your, your credits when we're going to talk about some of these. Sounds um, good. We know that you were the original Anel in Steel Magnolias, and there's a whole show right there. That's right. Um, the voice, say something, the voice of Patty Mayonnaise, on the cartoon, Doug. Yes, um, thank you. Yoga Jones, Orange is the New Black. And so many people have been asking me about that. And you recently made your Broadway debut in the Rose Tattoo. Um, and of course, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna figure out how we know each other, but thank you for being on. Patty Mayonnaise doll. I have some props. Okay. What, when what you do you got? When you giving my credits, um, and gosh, can you throw me that pillow? Thank you. Um, I have my Patty Mayonnaise doll with me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's for that part of my life. And then 
Um, here is a pillow that my husband made um, the first season of Orange is the New Black. So wow. sort of, that's what I look like there. Yeah. And oh like, my God, what, <laughs> what an awesome pillow. It's so, incredible. So, oh, really look at all these hearts coming your way. Where are you? Where am I talking to you from? You know, you, we're going to talk about your family a little later, but you're an acting family, but you're not in New York right now where you usually are. No. You are where? Okay. We, um, uh, I think it's like five weeks ago when they were really starting to close things down in the city. We came upstate. We have an old country um, farmhouse upstate New York. So right now I my, am sitting in front of a dresser. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's I'm beautiful. In front of a very old, distressed dresser that was found probably at an auction upstate New York. So I'm leaning on that, Rob, and I'm drinking my cocktail of choice, zero calorie soda. And I'm going to eat I'm a done. nosh. Yeah, so anyway, I'm over here with my prop. So, how old is the dresser? How old is the dresser behind you? Oh, okay. It's at least 30 years old, because that's when we bought it. My God. So I have ago. been to Deerhaven uh, many moons ago now, but we yeah. go way back. Like, I was there, oh my goodness, like the early 90s, really. Well, my son was born in 1996, and he was about, uh, how old was he when you made biscuits? Probably about three. two, three. So three so that's 1999. Wow. And I was there. I know I was there at least Before in like that. 95, 94. Yeah. Because I met you in 1993 when you were cast in Theater Works production of Imagining Brad, which was my very first show I ever directed at Theater Works. Right. No, that's it's true. It's true. You came to New York, you held auditions in a little black box theater. I don't really, I can't remember where it was. Do you remember where it was? Anyway, and um, I mean, we fell in love, Rob. <laughs> we did, I, I did. Came I, to I remember. Yeah, came to do it. And we had a huge snowstorm. It was like one of those first storms of the century remember there was a series and that was one of the first ones that they were calling the snowstorm up you know it and it really shut the city down and we had done one performance one we opened one on we started previewing i think it was a friday we had one preview yeah. and then the snow hit and but at the time actors were staying in as guests in homes of people so yes. I was there with you, and your co-star was? Lisa Debetta-Daddy. <laughs> I know. Who's Who really I haven't Lisa spoken Dette. to since that production. Oh, know. my God. I, oh, my God. That's I think I yet. saw her name. I'm going to check in a minute. Um, but uh, so we yeah. started, and you and Lisa and I were all guests of the theater. And we were put up at the Ramada Inn. Across from the Capitol was the Ramada in there. And a lot of candy. A lot of vendors. We lived on candy. That was it. Those I'm were still machines. doing it. I'm still <laughs> doing it. Bro. Well, as a little side note, I was at your wedding and you had lots of candy at your wedding. That beautiful at a there's, horse farm in Maine. That's right. There's a lot of candy. And uh, but that kind of started my sweet tooth that weekend. <laughs> that weekend. And I think we bonded. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot we of were, fun. We yeah. were out of, well for like days. And yeah, then we, we came back to the show. That's right. And That's then right. you came back to, in, and that was 93. In 95, you came back for Night Mother. You're um, seeing a show. You know that, aren't you? What show? The Swan. <gasps> oh, my God. The Swan. Rob. Isn't that crazy? That's how it was tired the it next is. year. 94, yeah. I did 93, the Swan. 93, 94, 95. The Swan, you were so brilliant in. And I remember David. Right. Oh, my God. David was a naked man on stage. That was one and of the first times we did full nudity, I think. Yeah, that was unbelievable. I've never been on a stage with a naked man since or before that. I'm distracted I because I thought I saw Lisa Decay's name. If you're out there, Lisa... Say hello. 
I we swear got, to God. Like, stop ghosting me 35 years <laughs> later. What All right. Well, I'm watching for her name. I thought I saw it little, literally. Um, oh, that would be incredible. If, wouldn't that be incredible? I'm gonna, if she's on, I have to pop you off for a minute. Well, so, yeah, that would also bring us back together. I mean, seriously, the show closed and our relationship closed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's there. Hold on. I'm going to bump you off. Don't go away, Connie. Okay. Hold on. Magic girl, don't go away. I should be talking. I just have to find her. Where are you? I saw you. I'm determined to find you. Ah, there you are. I'm adding you. I can't believe this. <clears throat> Lisa. Hi. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, so you were Lisa de Benedetti back yes. then. Now you're Lisa Decay. Yes. Oh my God, you look amazing. <laughs> and you're oh. Lisa Decay because who you married to and how do we know each other? Uh, we went to graduate school together. And I had the honor and privilege to be in one of your thesis productions, along with other productions I was in. We did Night Mother, which is a great coincidence that I just heard you say you and Connie did Night Mother together. Yes. And I also had the good fortune of meeting my wonderful husband, who you got to direct as well several times, yes. uh, Tim Decay. Right. Well, I love you guys. I can't believe you're here. You're in LA because clearly it's yes. like two o'clock or something. It's, yeah, it's two o'clock. Oh my it's God. Hot. It's you hot. Look, you and Connie <laughs> look almost exactly like I remember you, honest to God. Do you oh remember? God. So, what do you remember about the snowstorm? And what do you remember about Connie? Because Connie just said you've ghosted her since 1993. You know what? She's forgetting that we went to lunch and dinner a couple of times. Um, okay. So, once we were back in New York, um, I'm trying to think when that was. And then we moved to, we went to Denver Center for a season in 94. And then from Denver Center, we moved to LA in 95. So wow. I wasn't on the East Coast for that long before we moved here. Um, but one of the things I do remember uh, was that Connie made me laugh more than anyone I had ever met. And wow. she made me, she had so much experience and she was so kind to me and she was a great leader and role model. I was nervous. It was one of my first professional shows post-grad school. I and I was so fortunate to have you because we'd worked oh. together several times before. Um, and it was such an incredible experience. Well, I, I have so I'm many going to send memories. you, you and Connie, a Zoom invite so we can okay. have a proper reunion. And okay. I want to talk to you and Tim. So we're going to talk this weekend too. Okay. Okay, great. You look, I can't believe you came on. I can't, I can't wait to hear what Connie has to say. But I love you and don't disappear. I'm so I glad you're well. I, I, I'm so sorry. I, I just disappeared in kids and kid life and, and all that. But I can't wait to catch up with you and Connie. All right. Separately. Um, and um, thank you for amazing. I'll make it happen. happen. Yes. All right. Love you guys. Love, love you. Love you so bye. much. Okay. Bye. Okay, now I got to find Connie again, which is always, you know, tricky for me, but I'm doing okay. How am I doing? You know, old dog, new tricks. Let's see. Connie, ask to come back on if I, so I don't have to look for you. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, okay. I stepped my living room because I pressed the wrong button. Uh, let's see. That. Oh my God, where is Connie? Connie, oh wait, I see her. Uh, I'm looking. Okay, this hasn't happened before. Let's see. Oh, there she is. All right. I'm trying to get her back on. You'll all forgive me. I knew this was gonna happen. I have a new phone. All right, let me try. Okay, am I back? All right, hang on. I'm trying to post this thing. Oh, there she is. Okay, 
Oh my God. This is gonna go, I'm not gonna hear the end of this with um, my people go live. She's helping me out. Oh my God, I'm so stressed out. Connie, come and save me. Here she is. Oh my, oh my God. God. That was like a drama. Thanks but so. Lisa, you. Lisa, Lisa I was love there. that. How do we do it where we all see one another? We have to Zoom. Yeah, we have to Zoom. We have to Zoom. Thank you all for your patience. I almost disconnected us. No, I heard her voice. Yeah. Well, she said really nice things about me. She's lying through it. Oh my God! She was adorable. Remember, she had that whole monologue thing before we did our play, and she was freaking out. It was like a long monologue thing. She was adorable. It was so. Tell me about um, what. Out of the three shows you did at TheaterWorks, what, I won't say your favorite, what was like one of your most favorite experiences? Because I remember, you can ahead, I'm going to ask you the question. Oh, okay. Well, they were, all three were amazing in different ways. Imagining Brad was amazing because I met you. I mean, that was the gift. I met you and I met TheaterWorks in that experience. Uh, the Swan was amazing because I love that play so much. So the actual loving the play, the part, um, and I loved absolutely everything about it. And I loved my co-stars, Chris and David. And, Chris and Mixon, then, David. Um, and then uh, Night Mother, um, was amazing in a different way it, it you know just the the story itself but you and i had become closer and i really felt like we were family at that point um mary fogarty who did night mother with me i had done steel magnolias with her and so i felt like i was working with family doing that and um we're at different points in our lives and we both had things going on that were very intense and made that particular time a very extraordinary time. You know, so it really were, was. Yeah. Yeah. So I, what, three things I'm going to throw out of you. Closing night, imagining Brad, what happened? See if you remember. Oh. Somebody was jumping on a sofa in a basement. Oh my gosh, what happened? Peter oh. Hedgett. Peter Hedges was. <laughs> Tell that really quickly. What was he doing? Why he came he to see that? the show, and then he came but drinking. He Sorry, doing? Peter. He came out drinking. Now, Peter Hedges wrote, uh, who ate, what is that, uh, Gilbert Grape, right? Uh, well, who... he also wrote um, the thing recently, because yes. my daughter auditioned for him, the Julia Roberts movie. Yes. Um, uh, I mean. With, with his son. Yes, right? he it. was yeah. a, play, a young playwright. He came to see Imagining Brad, came back to where y you and Lisa, were you staying at yes. the same place? Or no, not? Well, one of your places. He came back to someone's house. We drank too much wine. And I remember him jumping on the sofa. Sorry, Peter Hedges. And now he's like famous. Um, no, he's famous as mother. a famous son. Yeah, that was crazy. That's right. Okay, so he was jumping. Oh, yeah, his famous son yeah. was just on Broadway. So, Night Mother Coco. You have to remember this story. Night well, Mother well, Coco. So much of the play is making hot chocolate. And we make it on stage, of course. And um, we're opening cabinets. I, I was opening cabinets. Mary, Mary, who plays the mother, was actually making the cocoa, I believe. But I was getting the stuff together. And I'm opening it. And there's... There's no cocoa. There's, there is no cocoa. <laughs> and I'm kind of looking around. It wasn't at that point. I don't know what your crew is now, but there was not a big crew. There was a lot of, a lot of volunteer crew. I believe Rob, crew. we were doing props at that time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, you know, looking around, no cocoa, banging cabinet doors, doing a lot of, I'm not a good um, improviser on stage. When things go wrong, you don't want to look for me to help. I panic and go into full blown panic. And did I walk off stage? No, you opened up a cabinet that you were not supposed to open. Oh, and, and there inside was like, was like... <laughs> all the 
Coco for, yes, for, for the run. Um, were in there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was yeah. There was some there was some nerves so going Lauren on. Lauren Incognito there. is on, Lauren Incognito was on. She said that may have been my fault. <laughs> oh, she it, was volunteering. It most, yes, it was most definitely Lauren's fault. Oh my fault. god. Do we you know, have, I'm still in touch with her though. Oh, that's still good. love her. I know we're we we all, once every great often every so often we'll we'll connect and I really have to see her, Lauren. Call me and we'll get we'll get together. But talk about um, Wait, who Steel was Magnolias. the stage manager, Rob? What was her name? The stage Lisa manager. Farron. I think it yeah, was yeah, Lisa yeah. Farron. Right. Yes. Yes. Who yes. is now ready? Lisa. For those of you who know, remember Lisa. She's a. If I get this right, she is a healer for dogs in Santa Fe, like a spiritual healer for animals. Oh, I can completely believe that. Yeah. Wow. And she's really happy and a beautiful kind of serene life. Oh, Talk wow. about That's Steel Magnolias. Now we know the movie. We, there's been, this is like one of the most produced shows. Probably if you did a list of most produced shows, it would be on it. Oh, yeah. And you were the original Annelle. And I actually love that, that, that show. What was it like? Did you know it was going to be that hit? Well, um, okay. So I think I was... Oh, uh, maybe 26. And um, it was the first big thing for me. And I remember going to the audition. And I had gone to beauty school. Do you remember that? Yeah, beauty school for three months before I moved to New York in case I needed a backup plan. <laughs> so anyway, I dropped out. <laughs> you know, I dropped out. And came to New York and then auditioned for Steel Magnolias, which was all about hair, all of that. And I remember going to the audition and, you know, doing fine. And then I went home and cut all my hair off. And then got a call back and then had to go to the call back with a completely, with no hair on my head. And um, <laughs> Why did you cut your hair off? For, you know, I was just like, I didn't, I think I probably thought mm, I didn't get it. I was like, you know, self-destructive, self-destructive. But also I did a lot of things to my hair. But anyway, so I went home, cut it all off myself, and then went and got the call back. And I remember them saying, maybe next time, wait till after the call back to cut all your hair off. But then they, <laughs> wigged, you know, they wigged everybody anyway. But um, it was it was such an incredible experience. It went on for many years in New York. I think I washed hair every night for two years. Uh. And then I was losing my mind and had to go. But the great thing about the Steel Magnolia story, um, and I'm still very good friends with a lot of those women today, is um, the show was done at the WPA Theater in New York first. And we thought we had a um, producer to move the play to a bigger venue. And so the show closed, that producer pulled out. So we had no producer, but we knew the show would do amazing. So the cast rallied together and we basically produced that show. The six wow. women, Kyle Rennick, who has just recently um, passed away, but with his guidance and the six women that were in the show, and we got families and Robert Harling who wrote it, and we all together moved that show to the Lucille Lortel Theater and then got our money back like that. Wow. And then none what a of great us story. in the movie. Yeah, no, it was Not if you were in the movie. <laughs> could care less. None of us, they didn't want any of us. But here's another great story. So anyway, we're doing Steel Magnolias. All of these movie stars are coming in to see the play because these are six amazing parts for women in the movie. So we had huge stars. We had Elizabeth Taylor. We had Dolly Parton. We had, get this, Betty Davis. Oh, my, my God. queen. <laughs> Betty Davis. On the front row. Oh, my God. So she was like, oh, maybe I could play Weezer in the movie. Anyway, it was unbelievable, the, the stars that Did showed. Shirley MacLaine come? Did the rest Shirley of them McClain, come? Shirley MacLaine, all of them were there. Sally Fields. Yes, Mary Tyler Moore, Sally Fields. I mean, oh, my gosh, I left out a huge one. Who? Lucille Ball. Ball? 
Lucille Ball. I love Lucille. Do you think she wanted to be Weezer? I don't know who she wanted to be, but she was one tough broad. We came running down the steps like, there's Lucy. And she's like, hello. <laughs> My name is Lucille Ball. She was, she was a tough woman. But, okay, here's the story. To say, you never know. Even though I didn't get to be in that movie, Dolly Parton had come to see Steel Magnolias. And, of course, she went on to play Truvy in the movie. She, fast forward several years later, I get this call to audition for her series, TV series, and she wanted me to do it because she came to see Steel Magnolias and saw me, so I ended up playing her best friend in a TV thing. What show? Heavens to Betsy. It never aired. It was a disaster. But <laughs> 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 Oh, my God. But you were in, I didn't mention this, you were in one of my little favorite movies, uh, Fried Green Tomatoes with Kathy oh, yeah. Bates. Oh, yeah. I love you in that movie. And I love especially when Kathy Bates smashes into that young person's car. I always refer oh, to that. But was that a good experience, Fried Green Tomatoes? Okay. Well, you know what? It was a good experience. But it, that was shot at a very hard time for me. Um, um, my dad had died not that long before the movie shot. And so I was down there. I was really sad. And this is what happened during that. So Kathy Bates, they're all great. And I was, it was shot in Atlanta, I think. And we were down there for a couple of weeks. And I had a lot of downtime. Go see the movie and you'll know why. <laughs> <laughs> I had like three scenes that were 10 seconds each. And, um... So I they were the longer beach. than that. No, they were cute scenes. And I went to the beach um, one day and burnt the living crap out of my skin. <laughs> and then I showed up for work the next day, and they had to put so much, like, orange base makeup to cover where it was so burnt that if you look at the movie again, I look like terracotta. <laughs> You are like so funny. Oh my god! I, I, no, it's all I mean, true. I looked like a clay pot. It um, was like orange. I yeah. want to get over a perfect segue because I can't believe like a lot of people actually really want to hear your thoughts on orange is the new black. Uh huh. You know what? How did that happen? What was that like? Very memorable character. You know, you really identified as that right now. Well, um, okay. I um, stopped working for 15 years after Night Mother was the last play I did. Wow. And I did a, a, do you remember I had to leave Night Mother to do this series? Do you remember that? With yeah. Meredith Baxter. We first. shut down the show for one week yeah. and then we ca all came back. And, and then we up. all came back. And so anyway, after um, um, I shot the pilot, I guess that's, that became a series. I did one year and got pregnant doing when I did the play and then stopped acting altogether for 15 years to have my kids. So um, I came back to my kids, I think were like 14, 16, and they were auditioning. I thought, you know what, I'm going to test out the water again so i <laughs> test found, out the water you know but nobody knew who you know it'd been 15 years i hadn't done anything i had to dig up an agent and <laughs> who happened to be a very close friend of mine and then the first thing he sent me on was this thing about a prison it was netflix i didn't even know what you know netflix to me at that time was getting the movies in the mail and sending them because Orange is the New Black, I believe, was the third Netflix show. Wow. House of Cards was the first one. And then there was a second one. I can't remember what it was. And then there, it was Orange is the New Black. So Netflix wasn't what it is now. It was all about the movies and mailing them back. So it was about... <laughs> um, there was this scene about... Um, I don't know, I guess it was the yoga, it was a yoga instructor, and she was giving a class and talking to somebody, I can't remember. And then, so I read it, and it had been so long since I had auditioned that I wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't even sure how to, I don't know, I was crazy. But anyway, I show up, and there are 
50 women in the room, you know, everybody's wearing yoga outfits, huge diversity with age and everything. And um, I, I was put on, you know, they taped everybody. And then I left. And then like two days later, this agent friend who I had to dig up to work with me, he called and said, you got this, this yoga prison thing. And I was like, wow. And this is what happened. So I go to wardrobe. Yeah, I, I didn't, I hadn't read the book. I didn't know anything about Piper, Carmen and Orange is the New Black and anything like that. But I went to show up for a wardrobe thing and they come out with these really horrible um, gray sweatpants. And I'm like, no, I'm like, where is <laughs> Lululemon? I'm not, I'm like, why is she? And, and I said, well, uh, she comes to teach yoga and leaves. Why am I wearing this? And she's like, oh, no, she doesn't. She's an inmate. But that just shows next time you need to prepare more. <laughs> I had no idea. And they still kept you on. And they kept me. But you and, know, other uh, women, I'm telling you, the range of how people prepare for something. Yeah. Some women were like, you know, had read the book, had worked in a prison, had gone to Oh, my prison. God. You know, you know what's so weird though? We can tell, like, I mean, you, you're you can read the phone book, but as directors, you can always tell. Well, most of the time, tell when an actor comes in and hasn't like read the play. You you just know, oh, yeah. and some and you and if you love them, it doesn't matter because you just say, "Go home and read the play," and then I'm gonna have you I back. Know. But I want to talk to you because because I want to get to. We're gonna do a game today. You're the oh, yeah, first. You're an experiment. Yes. But I want to talk about your family. So you're married to? Oh, yeah. So I married Reed Bernie, who is also an actor. Tony Award winner for The Humans. Right. A very, very good actor. A very strange person. <laughs> is he watching you right now? Yes. He's not watching. No. He's All in right. the kitchen making a mess is what he's okay. doing. And, and then we have two children that are also actors, both of them fantastic they're amazing and we're all here Ephraim Killing is your first other. child who's a, who's a son your son and Gus is your daughter that's right and I remember being in your movie room also we, we talked about I'd made biscuits with holding Gus holding and Gus was five weeks old and we were watching right. a movie and she fell asleep right here and I was in Gosh, heaven because it was a baby and you were like Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> it was such a gift. She, I think she lay on you. It was ours. She it was, was ours, you. yeah. I, yeah. And I didn't want her to be like, I'll take her. I'm like, no, let her stay there. And no, you that, really, that you really, you, I'm so respectful as you and Reed as, a, as parents because you like had your own path. You're really bonded to your kids and yeah. they are these, mo the most talented, most, I mean, they're just wonderful human beings. Will they come on and play the game? Will any will one of them come they on? They are. Do, is it time? Should I scream for them? Yeah, scream for them. Excuse me, I am going to yell. Okay, yell. I'm going to yell. Gus! <laughs> Jesse! Ephraim! Okay, All can right. you come in here? We <clears throat> need to play this game. <laughs> Mommy, okay, you know, I have some mayonnaise here, but okay. you know okay, that, screen. where is, where are they? Hi. Hi, Gus. Oh, come oh, here. No. Oh, yeah, there's yeah, yeah come on, come on. Yes, there is. Ephraim. <laughs> Hi, Ephraim. <laughs> hey, oh, my there. God. How's it you going? Guys, you're so Hi. amazing. So we're going to play this game about mayonnaise. Now, this is the wrong mayonnaise because we all know that your mom was the spokeswoman for crafts, yeah. yeah. but I couldn't get out. You know, I couldn't get out. Whole Foods is nearby. So we're going to play okay. this game called Pass the Mayo. And I'm going to tell you a fact about mayonnaise. And you have to tell me if it's true or false. Okay? Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Here's the first one. Mayo, mayonnaise is used to make marshmallow fluff. True or false? Ugh. A big fat false. Oh, that's. I hope that's false. I hope that's false. False. You're all right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good job. 
Okay. For, I'm scared for a second. Barack like, Obama so hates mayonnaise. True or false? Um, I would say that's true. That could be. I didn't like mayonnaise for a while. That I'm could be true. Say false. <laughs> true. <laughs> it's true. Mom and Sally. That's right. for being different. different. You can't be different. All right. Yep. Good question, though. Good question. Store bought mayonnaise is a good remedy for head lice. <laughs> okay, my yeah. team came up with these. They're amazing. Michael, I'm shouting out to Michael and Sunita. Both of these people, oh, no, actually, all three of us have had head lice. <laughs> Nobody put any mayonnaise on that's, me. Uh, true I'm or false? Say true. I'm going to say true. I think that's a myth, though. I think that's a. I feel like that's just going to make a mess. It suffocates the knit. It, it strikes. Honey says it. true. You I'm say. I'm going to say that's false. I'm going to say I that's false. false. It is true. Oh. Wow. Well, you know, that's what happens when you're the, the store bot. You know. How, Connie can't, you know, Connie you know, can't know. answer this one. You can't answer it. But the kids okay. can. In the original Nickelodeon pitch for Doug, other names considered for patty mayonnaise included Katie Cucumbers and Terry Tomatoes. Um, that is a big fat that, I think, false. no, you can't. <laughs> Uh, I think that is false. I think that's false. I actually you weren't think supposed a, to answer. I think that's a coincidence. I think that Patty Mayonnaise's name is a coincidence, right? They didn't name it after you. No, that is a coincidence. Yeah. But that is not true. Uh-huh. It is false. Okay, but you answer. weren't supposed to answer because yeah, I knew so you were know. I knew Wait. ahead of time. I How was it a coincidence? Yeah. <laughs> How was sorry, it a what? coincidence? Her name was yes. a coincidence. Oh, oh, because I was doing a set of mayonnaise commercials at the same time, you know, so I was the craft person, as we're saying, at the same time when they were putting together Doug, and he had already named her Patty Mayonnaise. Before you were even cast, I mean, right? I'm pretty sure. However, you know I got the pan Patty Mayonnaise part because the creator of Doug's wife was doing um was my aerobics teacher wow. and he was watching the mayonnaise commercials and said that's the voice i want for patty and she said she's in my aerobics class oh so my god my okay i have one more question one more okay, one right more here. question okay. one more are we keeping score what's going on <laughs> well i think Don't your mother's blessed. winning florence <laughs> wash leaves with mayonnaise for added shine florist Wash um, leaves, leaves with mayonnaise. mayonnaise for added shine. I think true. You would not make that, that up. That seems That's like it's true. It, I think true. I want to say true, yeah, but I, it, it seems so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> true. Okay, Yay. good. Yay. Did, yeah. You did pretty good. You did pretty good. Good job. Yeah. Do we think That's mayonnaise difficult. is delicious? <laughs> One of them, they gave me mayonnaise delicious. There's no answer for that. But listen, before <laughs> Ephraim gets off, tell me about what you're doing this summer up in the Berkshires. Well, the hope is that, you know, everyone's still You're around. doing it. Just say it. Go ahead. <laughs> but me and my dad are doing a play from Joseph Doherty. It's Chester Bailey in the Berkshires. Um, I play a character who has no eyes or hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And it's at Barrington Stage. And it's at Barrington Stages, yeah. Barrington Stage. Julie's a good friend. We talked about it. It's still on the book. It's still um, on the listen, book. But listen, we're going to have to, we're going to make biscuits together. <laughs> what, Gus? Is, and what are you doing, Gus? Yeah, what your show <laughs> What am I doing? Oh, Dickinson on Apple TV. Yeah. Watch it, yeah. Woo! Oh, my God. You are like the lunts on steroids, all I four know. of you. I Tell know. your dad I said hi. Ephraim and I are doing biscuits because we have to. I'm going to get yeah. some Bisquick because okay, that's great. what we use. <laughs> and I'm going to see you in the treehouse sometime soon. Okay. So, Rob, um, thank you so much for doing this. Please get Lisa Decay and me in touch again. Thanks, everybody. And Bye. thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you for coming on. And I hope to see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you all for coming tonight. I hope uh, the conversation was interesting to you. Uh, Connie is a, an amazing person. Her, <clears throat> her and Reed are this 
power couple and the kids, as you can see, are so talented. I hope if you're enjoying these shows, we're doing our best to keep you engaged. I hope you'll consider, if you can, a gift to Theatre Works. You can Venmo us at TW Hartford, or you could go on our website, twhartford.org. But we love you. We, we miss you. And I'm so happy you're tuning in. I hope you're having as much fun as I am. And now I'm going to go have some of those meatballs. Oh, wait a minute. I said I would do this. Before you go, so people have asked me if I really am cooking in the kitchen, and that's a meatball. So uh, I'm going to go enjoy this. Be well. Talk soon. <laughs>